first thing I look at when evaluating any outbound program is the targeting framework. Now, I'll start by saying there are probably softwares that can help you do this, but I'm gonna focus on how to do this yourself manually in a spreadsheet. And not doing this is a critical mistake a lot of sales leaders make. We get caught up in optimizing our subject lines and our email copy, which don't get me wrong is important, and we're gonna talk about it. But in my experience, 80% of your success is entirely dependent on who you're reaching out to in the first place. If you're hitting up the wrong people, it doesn't matter how good your emails are. You're never gonna get anywhere. A targeting framework is just a clearly defined list of all the types of people you or your team will be reaching out to, ranked in order of importance, and broken down by what factors indicate they're most likely to be in the market for what you're selling. It's an important point. We've included a template for how to do this in the resources section of this video for you. And while this step isn't super fun or incredibly sexy, it is incredibly effective at keeping your program on track because over time, there's just a lot of chaos that happens in sales, things change, and if you don't have a roadmap to follow, you can get in trouble. Truthfully, most companies don't even do this. They don't have a proper targeting framework. Taking this step is immediately going to provide some clarity to you and your team on what to do next. Just by following this process, I've seen companies turn around a failing outbound program and get 25 to 35% more meetings booked from an outbound team they thought was already optimized. The good news is it's actually pretty simple. We're gonna start by asking three questions. Who's our ideal customer? How large is our total addressable market? And how up to date is our understanding of each? Your targeting framework starts with your ideal customer profile. We abbreviate that as ICP, which is often boiled down to one individual persona, which can be a mistake because most often, there's actually multiple people you have to successfully sell to to bring a deal through. And a lot of companies get this part wrong because who executives and product marketing think are your ideal customer is often different from who's in your CRM and who's actually signing the deals your team is bringing in. So the first thing you wanna do is audit every single closed one deal your team brought in for the last two quarters and find who signed it, who else was on the email threads or the meetings you have with the client, and who was in the implementation call with your onboarding team. Once you do that, you're gonna walk away with three distinct personas. The first are the people who signed the deal. We call this your economic buyer. They're the check writer, they're the big dog. Ultimately, they have to buy in, but they're not often actually using your product or service. Their team is using it. And that's the second group. These are the people who are on the calls and on the emails. These are your champions. These are the people who will directly benefit from what you're selling or whose team will directly benefit. And without them pushing for you internally, there's no deal. Then there's that third group of people. These are your end users and your implementers. These are the people who ultimately have to interact with you and with your product and your service. At this point, you should know a lot about each group of people, including their job title, the size of the company they work at, the industry their company is in. And the last step is to lay out for each of those three personas, the economic buyer, the champion, and the end user, when is the right time for them to buy your product. And this is where I'd say most companies fail because they might know who the right people are, but they haven't really dialed in when to reach out to them. And this is a massive opportunity for improvement because the reality is only about 5% of the people you could sell to, which we call your total addressable market, are even considering buying what you're selling at any given time. So if we think about the number one thing you can do to improve your performance, it's to only reach out to that 5% of people, the people who are actively looking for what you have. I'm gonna give you an example, just bear with me. Let's say you've determined from your deal review that your champion is the director of marketing at a 300 to 500 person technology company. That's me. And the absolute best indicator of if they need your product or not is that they've just fired their entire content marketing team. That's what you would add to your targeting framework. And now you know not only who the buyer is, but when they're likely to buy. And the good news is there's a ton of data available to consider here. Things like, did they visit your website recently? Are they hiring? Are they downsizing? Are they new in their job? Did they just get promoted? All of this stuff is available in tools like Apollo for you to consider when you build this out. And you'll follow that process for each of the three personas, your economic buyer, your champion, and your end user. And now you have a really solid foundation for your ideal customer profile. You've broken it out in two dimensions, who they are and when to reach out to them. And to help you do this, we've created a guide that you can download in the resources section of this course. 
Now we have to move on to identifying your total addressable market, which just means the total number of people in the world who you can actually get in touch with. Meaning you have a phone number for them or an email address for them or a physical address for them or all three. Now there are a lot of methods for doing this. The old school way, you'd hire a research firm or a consulting agreement and that's almost entirely unnecessary. This is actually very simple. Using a tool like Apollo, you just take the criteria you laid out in your targeting framework for who each of those three personas are. We're gonna leave aside the when for now. And you then plug that into Apollo and see how many results are returned that have either a phone number or an email or a physical address. That's your total addressable market. Now you might find that your TAM is a lot smaller than you thought it was. Some companies have millions of contacts in their CRM and they assume that's their total addressable market because why else would they be in the CRM? But when you dig into it, you find that it's full of duplicates, it's full of outdated information, people who downloaded a marketing asset one time, and that's not actually your buyer at all. Because remember, that middle word is key here, total addressable market. Of course, this number is gonna change over time because people change jobs, they retire, they start new careers. And that's why it's critical to continuously update your TAM calculation, which you can do automatically with software like Apollo, but also a whole bunch of other tools. And broadly speaking, it's not a bad thing necessarily to have a smaller TAM than you thought, because that means it's easier for you and your team to focus on the people who could actually buy from you. And with that in mind, we're gonna go one step further than 99% of companies. And we're gonna plug in the when from our targeting framework, that when criteria, plug that into a tool like Apollo, and that's how you find the subset of your total addressable market that you should prioritize at any given time. This is the most important number because this is the number you're gonna to use to go backwards and decide how big does my team need to be? What is their activity metrics? What should their output metrics be? And then that's gonna lead you to determine what you can commit to deliver for the business and from your outbound program overall. Now, we've just covered a lot of ground with your brand new ideal customer personas laid out, rooted in the actual data of who buys from you, and with up-to-date total addressable market information, you can move on to that next step of the framework, which is your messaging framework.